truth be told, I am a little bit obsessed with the Théâtre des Champs-Élysées, and not just because of the famous events that have taken place inside, most notably the riotous premiere of the Rite of Spring. I love the exterior. It's a bold statement, monumental, details stripped right back. It's built from reinforced concrete, not stone. Very different from the glamour of the Belle Epoque Opera de Paris, the Palais Garnier. I'm fascinated too by the classical references. If you look above one of the entrance doors, you'll see a sculpture by Antoine Bourdel representing a Greek god and goddess. In fact, they're the great dancers of his day, Vaslav Nijinsky and Isadora Duncan. And at the top, we see a representation of Apollo. Apollo and Orpheus are also on the glorious ceiling inside the theatre. Stravinsky spent much of the rest of his creative life engaging with classical mythology. Oedipus, Apollo, Orpheus, Persephone, Agon. This theme runs through his work. Apollo of 1928 he described as a ballet blanc, a white ballet. It's simple, direct, very simple melodic lines, poetic. It's very much like the Art Deco environment in Paris in which he was living. Or perhaps one might say echoes the simplicity of the lines of the work of the designer Coco Chanel. It's a very French work, but at the very end, the apotheosis, we suddenly hear something different, much darker. It's as if he's lifting the classical mask and revealing the Russian behind. It's a searingly beautiful, poignant music that seems to speak of loss, personal losses, the loss of motherland Russia. And Orpheus, written just after the end of the Second World War, begins with Orpheus weeping for the loss of his lover Eurydice. This theme of loss seems to run deep through all of Stravinsky's music, even the classical ballets. <laughs> 